our sponsors. The Finkley Experience, an educational consulting firm that specializes in first-generation education and which prepares high school students for college. For more information, visit their website at thefinkleyexperience.com. Father to Father Incorporated, a nonprofit organization that strengthens families through father engagement with a goal to help men in our communities to be great dads. For more information, visit their website, fathertofatherinc.org. Ablaze Entertainment. The goal of Ablaze is to take emerging artists and develop them to the next level of their career. For more information, visit their website at ablazeentertainment.net. Thank you. What's up, everyone? It's Jalil Thurman here, your boy from HBC 101 Yard Talk 101 in the building. And I just want to let you know you're watching The Michael Finkley Show. Aha, don't go nowhere. Hello, everybody. It's Finkley from The Finkley Experience. We're an educational consulting firm that specializes in first-generation education. So we assist students with their college and career endeavors. We train school administrators on the state of first-generation students. And also, we partner with colleges and universities to assist their first-generation population for easy transition from high school to college. So if you're looking for a presenter or a speaker that presents on these topics and so much more, visit our website at thefinkleyexperience.com and learn about all that we do. We're looking forward to working with you. Next, Michael Finkley. Come on in Zoom. Former Zoomer Eric Rollins is with us as he tells us about his experience on the show and future plans. Next, Finkley. Hello everybody, welcome to the Michael Finkley Show. Thanks for joining us today. Now y'all, I love doing this show for you each and every week because I bring you incredible stories that you need to hear and that you want to hear. Persons that are willing and able to tell these stories as well. And again, just come to you and we share, we talk, we cry, we laugh with each other each and every week. But sometimes I can go back at those memories what I had within my childhood and bring on those individuals that made me laugh that made me enjoy my childhood just the most, right? Uh, so today is one of those shows. So as I look back and I'm like, which one of those shows really brought me joy? And I remember going to school, right? Coming home from school and I'm watching PBS Kids because sometimes we didn't have cable. So PBS Kids was one of those stations where if you didn't have cable, it was all good. You could still watch the shows. So I would watch Wishbone and Arthur and... Um, just watch these different shows on PBS. So one of those shows was Zoom. Now, Zoom was a show where you could do all types of activities. You get to learn different things. I thought more of it back then as a science show, right? You get to experiment. You get to build stuff with your hands. You get to just learn different things through this show. And as I learned more about the show as growing up, I really, really enjoyed it. And so that was my childhood. And I get to bring you one of the former Zoomers from my childhood. Eric Rollins is here with us, and he talks about his time on the hit awesome show on PBS and what he's doing today with his future projects. So don't you dare go away, Think Fam. Back in a moment. Next, Eric is with us. Don't you go away. Back in a moment. What's up, everybody? Christopher Martin, The Fashion Plate, and you are watching The Michael Finkley Show. You dead. Next, Michael Finkley. See how our next guest is telling her story to encourage others. Evelyn Drayton is with us to discuss her life-changing accident, which led to her inspiring publication. This is a story you don't want to miss. Next, Finkley. Welcome to Father to Father. The mission of Father to Father Charleston, South Carolina is to help fathers in the Low Country area of South Carolina 
to be a positive and consistent presence in their children's lives. Father to Father provides community-based programs and support groups for fathers free of charge. They also help fathers connect to other resources they need so they can meet their responsibilities and secure their parental rights. Father to Father offers job coaching and employment connections that benefit fathers. Father to Father is a resource for local organizations that want to provide family support and father-friendly services. If this program is a fit for you, visit our location in North Charleston, South Carolina and meet our friendly staff here to help and assist. Or visit our website at fathertofatherinc.org. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. Now, y'all, my next guest, y'all, I, I, my next guest is a childhood dream come true. I'm just telling you. I watch this individual, like, almost every day when I left out of school. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Okay, Fink fam, I'll tell you why. He's an actor and a former Zoomer, season three. He is Eric Rollins. How are you? Hey, what's going on, Michael? <laughs> I am super, uber, duper fantastic. I get to talk with Eric. I'm talking with Eric over here, y'all. Like I'm talking with oh, you. You don't understand. Oh, bless you. <laughs> I can blush. You know what, Eric? You know, it's just it's just honored to to chat with you and you know, just see what you've been up to all these years. So I, I must ask, did you see yourself in front of a, a TV or a camera, you know, on TV or in front of a camera all these many years? You know, I don't know that it was what I had initially planned but I think it was kind of always in the cards. I remember seeing videos from when I was younger, like, you know, just learning how to walk and they'd be trying to watch like my younger brother, my younger brother. There was, you know, trying to see him take his first steps and out of nowhere, Eric pops in and it's like, Hey, hi, hi. So whether it, whether it was intentional or not, it was, it was kind of always in the cards for me. I love it. So how did this journey begin for you? Were you at a younger age in commercials? Were you, you know, um, in different things in the neighborhood? How does that, what does that look like for you growing up? Um, it, was, it was a lot of luck, really. Uh, so I grew up in a small town outside of Boston. And ever since I was in preschool, I had always kind of been drawn towards shows. I remember in preschool, they used to have like a little Christmas pageant. So like I was I was Santa Claus one year and it, it was a blast. And then when I was in uh, elementary school, my third grade teacher used to put on plates. So every year she'd always do like play with an anthology with uh, the anthologies we're reading. And I had a lot of fun doing that. And she actually pushed me into a summer camp. And this was like a theater summer camp. I had no idea about any of it, but you know, got me out of the house during the summer, which is great. Um, and. I remember there's a, I'd done that for about four or five years, maybe a little bit longer. And a teacher had seen a notice uh, for Zoom. They'd had an open call. Mm -hmm. And she was like, she went to my mom and she's like, he needs to go do this. So we had went one year, auditioned for it, got, got a couple of callbacks, and then nothing happened with it, which is totally fine. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, my mom was like, do you want to do that again? And I said, yeah. And then from there, made it through, and the rest is history. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I'm so glad we were part of that history, Eric. So you were in season three. Uh, mm -hmm. What was that like, that first day you got on set, and you, what happened? Oh, it would, there happened, there was so much that happened even before the first day on set. It was kind of amazing. Um, the great thing about working with uh, GBH and PBS Kids was that they wanted to make sure that we were all safe and that everything was kind of done in a fun way. So it didn't feel like work. So what was the really cool thing was we learned that we had been booked for the show in, I think, January, or February. And then starting with spring break for spring break, we all got together and had a handful of days where we would go into the production offices, get to hang out with all with each other, get to know each other. And they would, you know, they kind of run us through, here's the different things that we're going to be doing. So like the cafe Zoom, some of the Zoom size, um, some of the games, just so we kind of had a feeling of, of what we were going to expect. And then after our spring break for the rest of the school year, every weekend we'd go in on a Saturday, mm -hmm. do a little bit more, learn a little bit more, get to know everybody, uh, including like we have to meet a lot of the, uh, the crew and producers. So it all 
by the time we actually stepped on set, it was already very familiar. We knew who we were going to be hanging out with, who we were going to be playing with. And it was great. It ended up, it just felt like a summer camp. It felt like just a summer of you had to show up from, you know, eight to four and you get to play all day and then you go home. And it was great. <laughs> How old were you at the time, Eric? Uh, at the time that we filmed, I believe I was 12. And then it aired the next year. So 12 when I shot, 13 when it aired. Gotcha, gotcha. And how long were you actually on this particular season? Well, for this particular time of Zoom? Oh, yeah. So what's kind of cool about the way the show works is they don't really carry a lot of people over. So I only did one season. I was only on for season three. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have, um, they have a bunch of us. And then every year they keep two from the previous season. So that way, for the kids who are watching, there's always at least a couple familiar faces. And then they get to transition somebody to see some new kids and new opinions and and just have experienced new people, uh, which is great. Because then you get to you get to meet a lot of people, which I think is really cool about the show. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. And then another cool factor was all the different experiments and the things you learn through song. And you talked to how, how to send out mail. Like, it was an amazing journey. What were some of the highlights from that time for you? Oh, man. There's, it's, they all kind of run together. But there was, it was so much fun. Um, we, we used to, so uh, on the show with me was Kenny. Uh, we were in the same season. He did a, the season before as well. And he and I were still good friends now. And we're, we were always very competitive because we were in the cast. We were the kind of the older two. Mm -hmm. And so every time we would do a Zoom game, they never put us on the same team. And so if you, if you ever watch like some of the old episodes closely, you can see that if like we're competing against each other, like there's, there's a little extra there. There's a little extra because we're like, you're like, oh man, come on, come on, come on. It's still like still having fun, but like you can see like, oh man, like rats. Um, so that was great. And then honestly, like the, the cafe zooms, I think were the coolest because I was never, like it was kind of where I learned to cook kind of on the fly. Not that I'm a cook now, not that I'm a good cook, um, but it was fun just to get to learn new things. Mm -hmm. So I think that experience was amazing because then if you mess up it's like okay this happened so like now what do we do we're on camera we just keep going with it wow amazing good good stuff there and you mentioned kenny i do remember kenny um mm -hmm. from the show do you keep in contact with any of the other other zoomers um not as much as we used to but still more than i still we still keep in touch which is great a lot of it's through social media um, Kenny is out in LA, so it's great. So I see him every now and again. Um, I know Pablo from season one. He was out in LA for a while, so we hung out a lot. He went, but he's back in Boston now. So we've like again, kind of like touch base every now and again through social media. Every once in a while, like a text or a call, which is nice. Awesome, awesome. And you actually came back during the pandemic as well in teaching students different things as you did on Zoom. Talk about it. What was that series like? Oh, that was amazing. So that was that was actually all Pablo, which was phenomenal. He set that up. He still works for WGBH um, in a different different facility now. Um, but he wanted to bring everyone together just because everyone was doing talking on Zoom as we're doing now. And like, how could we not? Um, so that was great. So he reached out to a bunch of us. And for those, those of us who were able to, they kind of like reached back and kind of looked at some of the projects that we had done back on the, when we were filming the show and like, what are some things that we can do to just kind of connect with everybody? And also again, just try to have some fun, try to make the best out of being stuck at home. So it was great. I got to kind of make my, my home a little studio and I think I did a seismograph. So I got, you know, cause I'm in LA, so I might as well test for earthquakes. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I love it. Cool beans. All right. So you're, that actually exposed you to another generation. Um, of, of students as well, of people as well, which is fantastic. How did that experience on Zoom prepare you for what was ahead in your adult life? A great question. Um, I think it did a lot, actually. Um, the cool thing about kind of being, doing TV and kind of working as a kid is you're exposed to a lot of adults. So you're kind of like, 
while you're having fun, you're also learning how the business end of it works, which is really cool. So from after to Zoom, I kind of had a better rapport with a lot more of the adults in my life mm -hmm. because I've been working alongside with them for, you know, all summer. And I think it kind of gave me a, a sense of a bit of a stronger sense of a work ethic of like, we can still have fun and get things done. Um, which I think was kind of, which is kind of nice. So moving forward as I've stayed in the industry, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to, it just feels more comfortable. Nothing feels too overwhelming. Everything can be like, okay, well, I can take a second. I can take a second. And then like, let's figure this out. Mm -hmm. And then it, it just makes things a little bit easier. Gotcha. Gotcha. What's Eric up to today? Today? So many things. Um, no, I just uh, actually just finished two short films, which is really cool. A um, couple of, yeah. So I got a, one of them's already in, has been submitted to festivals. It's a kind of a, a 80s throwback horror short, which will be really cool. And then I'm waiting, we're doing in post-production right now for another kind of comedy horror thing uh, about a werewolf trying to not change during his surprise party. Oh my gosh, I want to see that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hopefully that, that'll, those will all be kind of rolling out soon. Awesome. Um, so in our season five, this is season five for us here, Eric, and awesome. uh, season five for us stands for Biggest Dreams Coming True. Uh, what is still Eric's biggest dream? Oh, so many. Um, right now, the thing that I'm, I'm kind of most excited about is business and acting is going great, and, and I love what's, what's going on with that. But I finally started hitting some bucket list items this year. So one of my biggest things is I, I've always wanted to learn how to fly a plane. So okay. I've... Yeah, so I've, I've taken, I've already taken a little step towards that, did like a test flight and kind of got hooked. So now I'm trying to see what do I need to do so I can keep doing that. Oh, wow. Hmm. Eric in the air. I love it. Come on. Trying, trying, trying. <laughs> Let us make it happen. After all these many years, right? Uh, you, when people look at you, they, stay, they may say, Eric has accomplished a lot right? What is Eric still learning about himself? Oh, I don't think you ever stop learning about yourself. Um, I think one of the coolest things that I've, over the last few years that I've really been tapping into is kind of learning about, like, honestly, like emotions and being able to like communicate better and more effectively. I think that we can always learn and we can always grow. Mm -hmm. So it's always nice to kind of be able to have a feeling, whether it's a good feeling or a bad feeling or whatever, and be able to kind of sit with it and be like, oh, this is interesting. Let me, let me like give this some space. Let me, let me see what this is. Let me, let me go with it. I feel like a lot of times, and I think we're seeing this as a cultural shift right now anyway, mm -hmm. a lot for men has been to push down, push down emotions and push away feelings and not really be able to embrace, embrace kind of that, I guess, softer side, if people want to call it that. And I think it's been an amazing journey just watching culturally things shift that way. But even just for myself, just, okay, why do I want to push this feeling away? What's going on with that? Let me explore that for a little bit. And I think that that has helped really to deepen a lot of my relationships, you know, friend relationships, romantic relationships, all that stuff. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love it, Eric. First, and I love what you said, you know, you never stop learning. You, you better. You better, you better want to learn. Right? Uh, someone will right? learn for you, I promise you. Uh, how can the Fink fan follow you and keep in contact with you via social media? Of course. Um, so uh, mostly on Instagram, uh, the at the Eric Rollins. Uh, same thing on Twitter. Uh, I have a Facebook page, I believe. I haven't looked at it in a while. So if I haven't updated, I apologize. Uh, but yeah, Instagram is usually the best way to get me. And I think I've got a TikTok. I'm not sure yet, though. You think? <laughs> I think I set, I, I set one up. I set up a TikTok. Okay, at least it's there. And then, and then I don't know what happened to it. I think I deleted the app, but it might still be there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I love it. Y'all just remember, come on and Zoom with Eric. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Y'all, you're welcome. Big fan here. Go away. Back in a moment.
Hey everyone, it's Jasper Cole, one of Hollywood's bad guys, and you are watching The Incredible, The Michael Finkel Show. CTR Media Network was created for today's podcasters. We provide a safe haven for content creators that are everyday people doing extraordinary things. We have a system of positioning, monetization training, coaching, and support for our podcasters' success. CTR Media Network simply bridges that gap with a level playing field for your dreams to come true cost effectively. Our team provides a premium service and experience for our podcasters to grow. CTR Media Network provides access, support, resources, coaching, and community for our podcasters to win, if you put in the work. We believe that we are living in a unique time which requires you to share your message of hope with millions of people around the world. Remember that the world is never too saturated for you, your voice and message. A platform for positive impactful media where the content creators are in the driver's seat. Visit our website today by going to www.ctrmedianetwork.com. Hey, I'm John Marshall Jones. Some of y'all know me as Smart Guy Daddy. And you are watching The Michael Finkley Show. Next, Michael Finkley. See how our next guest is telling her story to encourage others. Evelyn Drayton is with us to discuss her life-changing accident, which led to her inspiring publication. This is a story you don't want to miss. Next, Finkley. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Michael Finkley Show. I hope that you learned something from this show today. Uh, thank you, Eric, for being with us and just making my childhood dream come true. Thank you so much. And much success to you in the future. Much success. Please keep in touch. Please, 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 please. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Michael Finkley Show, and that bell notification. We'll see you in email saying, hey, new content is available. This is us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. For more information about what we do, visit our website, michaelfinkleyshow.com. Remember, we are on U42, we're on Roku TV, and now uh, we are on Amazon Music via their platform of podcasts. So go check us out, y'all. All the information is below. Thank you so much for watching. Guess what? We'll see you next time. Have a good one.